Thanks very much. Yes, being recording now. Uh, okay, so Happy New Year again to everyone and welcome back to those who were with us before and welcome to the first timers. Hopefully you would like our program. Um, so hopefully you would like what you hear and uh, I'd encourage everyone to participate as actively as possible. And uh, I'll keep requesting for everyone to keep your uh, videos on, please, especially if you are speaking. And uh, okay, so with that, uh, we can get started. I, I also want to make a confession and that is uh, I almost skipped all the contents of tonight's uh, class. Um, the reason was it's uh, very technical and it's very confusing. So if tonight you feel confused and, you know, what was he talking about? Um, I'm expecting you to feel that way. I, I'll do my best to explain and I'll encourage you to ask questions, but it may still not be crystal clear to you. So, um, I mean, I can apologize, but uh, I think the subject matter is very complicated and hence uh, there may be some confusion. Okay. Any questions before I get started? When, Prabhuji, when you are starting? I'm sorry? Which part you are starting? Okay, so we're going to start from Canto 2, Chapter 5. Canto 2, Chapter 5. Okay, thank okay. you. So, those of you who were here in the last class, at the end of it, we had looked at two questions that uh, Parikshit Maharaj had asked Shukadeva Goswami. And uh, we also discussed the answers. The two questions were, uh, Parikshit Maharaj is asking, please show the way of perfection for all persons, especially for one who's about to die. And the second question was, um, please let me know what a man should hear chant, remember, and worship, and also what he should not do. So I'm hoping you remember the answers to those two questions, but very quickly, the, show, the way of perfection is the performance of pure devotional service, which is without any material motivation and nonstop. So it's 24 seven, not a one hour, two hour chanting session, and that's it. And uh, we should hear, chant, I should say we should hear the glories of, chant the holy name of, and remember the pastimes and the form and the qualities of Lord Krishna. And we should also worship him. And we should not get into demigod worship or impersonalism and things like that. So very briefly, that's, the, that's what we discussed towards the end of last class, which was two weeks ago. Part five, can I? Sorry, somebody saying something? Now, Shona Krishi, does anybody remember who Shona Krishi was? K with K with the K as a capital. I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Thank you, Can you come closer to the mic? Who was Shona Krishi? Shona Krishi was uh, like the who who uh, who's uh, like a prediction Maharaj asked from whom he prediction Maharaj asked for the water. No. No, Katha uh, he was. Prabhuji, one who was Radhika? asking the question to prediction Maharaj during the Bhagavad uh, to. Uh, no, no. Shami Krishi. of Naranan. Sorry, Namnit, what was that? I might pronounce it wrong, but the sages of uh, Nar... Nanisharanya, yes. Correct. So he was basically the head of all the 80,000, 80,000 sages of Nanisharanya who were listening to Sutta Goswami. And Shona Krishi was, as head of the group, asking the questions on behalf of all sages. Okay. Proji, what, what, what candle are we on, Proji, please? Can you please tell me again? Like, I'm sorry, my, 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 
Can you please tell me what candle or text are on so I can join the class, please, Prof. G? I'm sorry, I can't understand what you're saying. Can you please tell me what canto on, we're on on the Shiva Bhagavatam? We are so starting canto 2, chapter 5. So 2, chapter 5. Okay, thank you. Right. And we should, I should also mention that I don't cover chapters in detail. So this whole thing is very uh, a summary of the whole thing. We're trying to cover the entire 12 cantos in 26, 27 weeks. So we're not getting the details, certainly not getting details of any verses or deep philosophy. We just want you to have a general understanding of what's in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Okay. Uh, any other questions or comments? All right. So Shona Krishi, now that we've established who he is, he asked Sutta Goswami, to please describe the next question that Parishit Maharaj asked Sutta Goswami. And he requested Sutta Goswami to please continue to explain these topics, which result in the discussion of the Lord. Because all the assembled sages are very eager to hear them. And then he said something very uh, profound. He said, both by rising and by setting, the sun decreases the duration of the life of everybody, except, except one who utilizes the time by discussing topics of the Supreme God, Personality of God. God. And then very, very interesting description Shona Krishi gave of non-devotees. I'm sure you'll find this very interesting. Shona Krishi said, men, who are like dogs, hogs, camels, and asses. Praise those men who never listen to the transcendental pastimes of Lord Krishna. Yeah. Yes, Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Yes. Can everyone please keep yourself on mute? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So, he said, men who never listen to Krishna Katha or never sing the glories of Krishna are considered to have ear holes. The ear holes. Two books that are left by a man. Can you please <coughs> keep it on mute? Thank you. So, he was saying, those people who never listen to Krishna Katha or sing the glories of Krishna are considered to have ear holes like the holes of snakes and the tongue of a frog. Some very strong words. Then the head, even if crowned with a silk turban. I'm going to mute everyone from this side because some people are still not putting this on mute and it keeps disturbing. Okay. And he said, the head of the man, even if found with a silk turban, is only a heavy burden if it does not bow down before the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And hands, even if decorated with glittering bangles, are like those of a dead man, yes. if not engaged in the service of Krishna. Excuse me, can you mute everyone, please? Canto. What canto? Okay, so he's describing the hands of the people who, who may be decorated with bangles, but if they're not engaged in the service of Krishna, they're like the hands of a dead man. And then he says, the eyes that do not look at the form of Krishna are like those printed on the plumes of a peacock. 
and the less that do not travel to a place of pilgrimage are considered to be like tree trunks. And he continues, he says, a person who has never received the dust of the feet of a pure devotee or experienced the aroma of the tulsi leaves from the lotus feet of the Lord is a dead body. And he concludes by saying, a heart is steel framed if it does not melt upon chanting the holy name with concentration. Very heavy words, but, but uh, something to remember. You know, and he's talking about the head, the eyes, the hands, the feet, you know, the tongue, the ears, everything. You know, the whole idea being as human beings, we should engage all our senses in the service of Krishna. And that is what the definition of bhakti is. So then Sutta Goswami said, the next question that uh, Maharaj Prichit had asked was about how the Supreme Personality of Godhead creates, maintains, and then annihilates these material universes by his personal energies. He wanted to know whether the God acts alone with the modes of material nature or does he simultaneously expand into many forms or does he consecutively expand into many forms to direct the modes of material nature. So some very heavy questions coming up. So when Shukdeva Goswami heard this question from Parishit Maharaj, Suddenly can you please he remembered repeat the question. question. Sorry. Can you please repeat the question again? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. Sutta Goswami uh, said that the next question from Prichit Maharaj to Shukdev Goswami was how does the Supreme Personality of Godhead create, maintain, and then annihilate all these material universes by his personal energies? And he wanted also to know, does he act alone or does he expand himself into many forms? And if he expands himself, does he do it simultaneously, all the forms or consecutively? Okay, is that clear? Yes, thank you. Sure. So when Shukadeva Swami heard this question, he suddenly remembered, sorry, he suddenly remembered that uh, he had become so excited upon hearing Maharaj Pariksit's first question that he answered that question without first chanting his Mangalacharan prayers. And we had discussed this in the last class. So before he answered this, he actually chanted all these prayers. And those are described in chapter 4. And then he started to answer the questions in chapter 5 that we're discussing now. And so he started by talking about the story, well, not the story, the incident of when Narad Muni visited Lord Brahma and requested him to describe this material world, its symptoms, its background, how is it created and conserved, which is maintained, and under whose control is all this being done? So basically, same questions. So, um, uh, Shukadeva Goswami is saying, you know what, your questions are the same as what Brahma had asked, uh, sorry, Narada Muni had asked Brahma. So I'm going to tell you about that and then I'll answer it by telling you, or so I should say, repeating the answers that Brahma gave. So actually, one thing you will find about Srimad Bhagavatam is like uh, there's a dialogue between a dialogue between a dialogue between a dialogue. So here it is. Shona Krishna is asking Sutta Goswami, who's telling him what Parishit Maharaj had asked Shukadeva Goswami, who's telling him what Narad Muni had asked Brahma, and then telling what Brahma had said. All in one. And you see that's throughout Shimad Bhagavatam. And the reason is nobody wants to give an answer that they made up. So everybody's quoting an Acharya. And that's a lesson for us. We should always be basing our answers on what the Acharyas have said. Otherwise, we are bound to be wrong. So that's the lesson right there. Okay? 
Excuse me. So then Narad Muni also said, my dear father, please, I know that you know everything, you know the past, you know the present, you know the future, but what is the source of your knowledge? Who is protecting you? And who do you work for? My dear father, what is your real position? Do you alone create all entities by your personal energy? And then Narad tried to answer his own question, the last question, whether you create everybody by yourself. And Narad says, Father, I think, well, before I go further, everybody knows that Narad Muni is the son of Lord Brahma. Right? Yes, no? Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Now you know. Otherwise, now you know. Brahma is the father of Narad Muni. So Narad is calling him father. He says, Father, I think you create everything without any outside help, all by yourself. You're so great, my dear father. But I wonder if there's somebody more powerful than you are. Brahma was very happy to hear the questions and the comments of his son Narad. So he actually congratulated him for such an intelligent question. But what makes his question intelligent is because a question like this benefits everyone and removes many people's illusion that Brahma is God or Brahma is the ultimate truth. And Brahma felt that this is the humility of a great person. Brahma felt this is important to point out that he's not God. Because there are so many people who claim to be God. And he said, I can ask these people who claim to be God and say, hey, I created you and I'm not God. So how can you be God? How can the creation of somebody who's not a God, be a God. And you know, I'm sure all of you, if not all of you, most of you have met people or have heard of or read about people who claim to be God. And actually I had a personal experience many, many years ago. We were in Vrindavan with my family and just doing the parikrama walking and a man in his bicycle stopped beside us. And he said in a very you know, grave voice and loud voice. He said, I am the one you're looking for. I am the one for whom you came to Vrindavan. And I knew right away this is a crazy man. So I said, well, if that gets tell my name. And his bicycle away because he had no answer. So my point is like, there's a lot of people uh, that claim to be God. And Brahma saying, how is that possible? If I created you and I'm not God, how can you be God? God is not created by anybody. So anyway, <coughs> excuse me. So Brahma said, and kind of anticipating the question of Narad Muni, well, what do you use for ingredients? Where do they come from? How do you create the ingredients? So he said, I create using the ingredients that are created by the Lord, by his personal effulgence. Anybody knows what the other name for personal effulgence of Lord Krishna is? A very famous word or term. Brahman. Brahma Jyoti, yes. Brahman effulgence, Brahma Jyoti, yes. Okay. Brahma. So all the ingredients are created by the Brahman effulgence. And he gave the example. He said, just as the moon and the stars manifest their brightness after the sun manifests its fire. Is that example clear? Like the moon and the stars are getting their energy, their brightness from the sun. And sun is getting its fire and the energy and the brightness from Brahma Jyoti. Okay, is that point clear? Yes. Yes, no? Yes. Okay, all right. Yes, yes. Thank you. And uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in a purport, Srila Prabhupada gives, gives the example of a small seed of a banyan fruit. That small seed 
has the potency to create a big banyan tree. For those of you who have seen a banyan tree, you know it's very, very big. And I think one of, one of the classes earlier on, we were talking about banyan trees who are like maybe in a one and a half acre of land, one tree in one and a half acres of land. And I was talking about the one I saw in Maui. Uh, so yeah, they can be very big. But they all start from very tiny little seed, which has the power to create that big banyan tree. He said, similarly, the Lord disseminates all varieties of seeds by his Brahma Jyoti or Brahma Nifalsas. And the seeds are made to develop by the watering process of people like Brahma, Lord Brahma. Brahma cannot create the seeds, but he can manifest the seed into a tree. Just like a gardener grows plants and orchards and trees by simply planting a seed and watering. Right? So going back to the example of stars and the moon and the sun, the stars and the moon are creations of the sun. And the sun is creation of Brahma Jyoti and Brahma Jyoti is the effulgence of the Lord who is thus the cause of all causes. All causes. So I'm going to stop because I know it's getting heavy. So I'll wait for any questions or comments you have, any clarifications you need. They are very basic concepts, but I know they are heavy. So feel free to ask any question. Uh, uh, Prabhuji, uh, like, uh, what about uh, Brahma himself? Like how, like, so like I'm, like now we understand that stars are, uh, coming from sun and sun is coming from Brahma Jyoti and uh, but what about Brahma himself? Yes, Brahma Jyoti is if you give me a few minutes, okay. I'm, I'm going to cover that in a lot of detail. Okay, okay. okay. It's, it's coming up very soon. Okay, but very good question. Uh, hello, Prabhu. Uh, I have a question. Yes, Prabhu. Uh, yeah, uh, actually uh, uh, earlier you said uh, I think uh, Shukadev Swami uh, forgot to chant and he told that he forgot to chant, right? So what, what was the reason that has been, that has been, I mean, that is quoted in Bhagavatam? It says that he got so excited by the quality of the question, he forgot to do Mangalachal. Yeah. It's such a good question he had asked, he was very excited. So I just said, and then later on he remembered that, oh, wait a minute, I didn't do that. Yeah, or a very simple reason. Okay. You just simply I mean, forgot. You're so excited. Okay. So I was thinking, uh, like, was there a message to us that we need to chant uh, before? Yes. So, see, uh, what's the first thing we do in this class? We. Sorry? Uh, I mean, we chant. Yeah. We chant Manglachar, which is Brahmi Mantras. Yeah, Pranam. Uh, yes. So, th that's what we're supposed to do. Before you write a book, before you write an article, before you speak, you should do Banglachar. Invocation prayers, always. Okay? Yes. So Prabhu, does that mean every time we read uh, at home, like read any book, like we have to always make sure we start with it's, it's nice. It's nice if you do that uh, for reading, but certainly if you're speaking, are you going to create something like an article or essay or something, a poem, then you should definitely do that. Okay. And, and uh, um, it's better to get in the practice of saying these prayers before you do anything. So for example, any meeting I have, I do these prayers before the start of the meeting. You know, because basically saying, please, Lord, bless me, so I may do whatever pleases you. Right? That's, that's the basic purpose. I mean, Mangachar has three components normally. One is the, the prayer to the Lord. Second is the uh, objective of whatever we're doing. And third is blessing to, to us who's the, creating it and also to the people who are going to hear or read or whatever. So those are the three components of the of the uh, Mangalachar. Okay. 
So Prabhu, is there a is there like a standard? Uh, so like we see like different devotees chant different prayers as part of Mangala Charan. So uh, so there are a few, and uh, in Iskon the standardization for a lecture in a class, I mean a discourse is the whole Om Agyanti Mrandasa Gyanan Shalakya, the whole sequence of them. And what we do here is short version of that. So Prabhupada, uh, um, praying to Prabhupada, praying to Lord, um, Lord Chaitanya and Pajatatvas, praying to Lord Krishna, and then offering obeisances to all the devotees. Hmm. So we keep it very short. But this is a longer version also that we do before a discourse. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else? And Hare Krishna Prabhuji, uh, what about before, before chanting? What about before chanting? Good question. So before chanting, you should always uh, chant Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advait Gadadha, Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhaktivanda before going to the next round. But before you start chanting, you should also pray to the Lord, uh, sorry, to your Guru or Prabhupada and then Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda. And uh, and if you have time, the best thing is to read something about Krishna, either a pastime or a bhajan or something. So you get in the right frame of mind before you start to chant so that your offenses are reduced. Uh, because you get the consciousness as close as possible to, uh, to chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. So there are different ways of doing that. Okay, but Pitashi is sometime I have heard so many Maharas. I heard lecture, but he's saying first you can do just Prabhupada chanting one round, then again Radharani chanting, then you can start just Hare Krishna Mahamantra chanting. I don't know which one is good. Can you? No, so there's no wrong answer. Okay. You can do whichever way you're comfortable. If your guru has said something, you must do that. Okay. And yes. if you heard some, somebody else, if it appeals to you, do that. It's not like there's a wrong or right question. question. Answer? Huh? Huh? Yeah, so my wife is here saying that, uh, but it is very essential that in your prayer, you include the Panchatattva prayer, which is Sikrish Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, because they are the Shri most Yadana. merciful. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Pitaj. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you for a very good question. Okay. So if there are no other questions, I'll move on. Now, so Brahma is still continuing. And he said, the five gross elements. Anybody knows what the five gross elements are? Earth. Yes. Earth, water, air, air, water, air, water, fire, ether. ether. Earth, air. Air. Yes, thank you. So he said these five gross elements are elementary ingredients of creation along with the interaction of time and nature of living entities. I will explain that in, in a second. They all are differentiated parts and parcel of super, Supreme Personality of Godhead. For those of you who have read Bhagavad Gita, chapter 7, text 4, it talks about Bhumir Apo Anala Vayu Khamano Buddhurevcha Ahankar Itiyamme Bhinna Prakriti Ashtadha. Krishna is describing these eight material elements. So Brahma is saying basically the same thing, that this is what I need to create. But these are created by Krishna, I cannot create them. These elements are created by Krishna, I cannot create them. He said, because even I am created by him and I am inspired by him. And we'll discuss that again uh, in a little while. So Brahma is saying, I discover what is already created by Krishna and use it to create what you would call a product. Just like a factory produces various products using the required ingredients. So for example, uh, um, a Toyota motor company produces cars, but they use different ingredients. And there are factories, sub-factories, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you start with basically, you know, silicon and steel and all those kind of things, and you make product, uh, parts, and then you come to a place which is all assembled, and a car comes out. I don't know if anybody has seen a car being manufactured. It's a very fascinating place. 
where the whole thing, the conveyor belt is moving, different parts of the car come in at the right time and the right spot and they get connected and the car keeps moving. Car doesn't stop. And in about one or one and a half minutes, completely assembled car comes in, somebody puts gasoline in it, they sit in it, can drive. start the car. Yeah, in Detroit, I've seen it. And then can drive. Yeah. So it's amazing. But anyway, my point is that but the ingredients are not made by Brahma. Ingredients are made by Krishna. Krishna. He is, he is uh, creating it. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and you can think of the example, it'll come back later again. But think of a potter. Potter is making a pot. But what's the ingredient? The water and the earth. Right? Those are the main ingredients in a pot. Who's making the water? Who's making the earth? Not the potter. Right? Who made the wheel? Well, that's again a variation of earth. So Krishna made that. And then he's using a wood stick. Who made that? Krishna did. Potter is only giving shape to the earth that was created by, by Lord Krishna using another ingredient, water, that's also created by Krishna. Right? So Brahma is saying, understand it that way. And we'll keep talking about it in this class um, multiple times so it becomes really clear. Okay, so what I'm going to do is uh, to further explain the process of creation, Brahmaji uh, talked about the Purusha incarnations. And let me see if I can share this screen again and show you some slide or slides, I should say. And uh, let's see. Okay, so we talked about creation. Okay, so this is how it all starts. Can you all see the screen? Yep. Okay, so right in the center at the top is? Lord Narayan. Lord Krishna. See the in food? The center of food Narayan. Lord Krishna. Right at the top, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It all starts with him. So from his left hand, a manifest Shimati Radharani. That's his immediate expansion. And from his right hand or right side comes Lord Balaram. Balaram. Who's also immediate expansion of Lord Krishna. So clear so far? Now, it is Lord Balaram who is instructed or inspired by Lord Krishna to start the whole process of creation. Hmm. So he first expands himself into what's called First Lord Narayan. Can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Yeah. So this is first Lord Narayan. Lord Narayan expands into what is known as quadruple expansion, which means four. And you have the Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha. Together they are known as quadruple expansion, the first quadruple expansion. And these are the personalities who appear in Dwarka Leela. So you have Vasudev Krishna in Dwarka, you have Sankarshan Balram in Dwarka. Who was Pradyumna? Anybody knows in Dwarka Leela? He was the son of uh, Prad Son of Lord Krishna. Yeah, son of Lord Krishna. Right? Incarnation and then, of Kama. And then, and yes, that was correct. And then Aniruddha, who is called Anirudha. Sana Pradyumna. Anirudha. So these four appear in Dwarka Leela. They are also known as first quadruple expansion. So on this screen you see, sorry. On this screen you see first Lord Narayan and the first quadruple expansion. And the reason Dwarka I keep Dwarka. saying first is that the first Sankarshan expands again into a second Lord Narayan. Hmm. So remember, Krishna to Balram, Balram to Narayan, Narayan to Sankarshan, now Sankarshan to second Narayan. Oh. Okay. The second Lord Narayan expands again to quadruple expansion. And you get second Vasudev, second Sankarshan, second Pradyumna, second Aniruddha. Okay, so they appear twice. 
okay notice also they all 400 narayan four okay now the second sankarshan is here right how does second sankarshan come krishna to balaram balaram to narayan narayan to first sankarshan first sankarshan to second narayan to second sankarshan second narayan to this okay so this second sankarshan now expands into what's known as karnodakha vishnu or mahavishnu okay so there are three personalities here together they are known as purush avataras okay or three vishnus the three vishnus so first one is an expansion of second sankarshan known as karnodak or the causal ocean karnodak means causal ocean so shai means one who is lying down so vishnu is lying down on the causal ocean is karnodak ocean is that clear now causal ocean is between the material world and the brahman effulgence the spiritual world that's where it's lying okay now he is lying with his wife and he's in what's known as yoga nidra which is kind of sleeping but the lord never really sleeps his sleep is known as yoga nidra and i'm going to tell you what amazing feat he accomplishes while asleep so in his sleep he decides the time for creation of the material world so he glances at material nature maya from his glance all the living entities that were so far lying in his womb come out and he impregnates material nature so all the living entities are transferred from karnodaksha vishnu to maya or material nature and then from his then he exhales Oops, sorry. Then he exhales, and when he exhales from the pores of his skin, you can imagine how many. I mean, those of us who are more hairy than others can tell you how many hair on their body. And with each, each hair, there's a pore on the skin. So from each pore of his skin come out these universes. So literally, unlimited universes, trillions and trillions of them are come out. that's the big bang theory they all come out when he exhales okay clear so far so this is uh, you can see this is the causal ocean and these are the universes in the form of bubbles so many coming out okay and then what he does is he karnodaksha vishnu or mahavishnu expands himself into was known as garbhodakshai vishnu outside each universe so it started with one vishnu mahavishnu now you have one for each universe garbhodakshai vishnu so trillions and trillions of them and he finds it very dry there so he produces from his sweat an ocean known as garbho ocean okay clear or confused not just <laughs> be honest stop me if this is not just clear. a little confused here i think so ask a question please um i think if you can go over uh, garbhodaksha shai vishnu that's like, okay so i'm just going to explain more so he the karnodaksha vishnu expands outside of each universe as garbhodaksha vishnu So trillions of universes, trillions of Gopadakshay Vishnus, and we are living in one of those universes. Okay. Now, <coughs> so he produces this Garb Ocean from his sweat, and on Shesh Nag he lies down, and this Mother Lakshmi massaging his lotus feet, and from his navel comes out a lotus flower with a stem. You can see the lotus flower here. Yes, coming from his navel, Brahma. and from on top of the, the lotus Brahma. flower is sitting Lord Brahma. So Ram Priya Prabhu was asking about Brahma, or Dhan Kumar Prabhu was asking for Brahma. So this is how Brahma is produced by Gopadhar Shri Vishnu, and we'll get into more details in a second. Okay, then Gopadhar Shri Vishnu 
enters each universe as was known as chiro daksha vishnu chir means milk it's not khir khir is sweet rice k h e e r khir is sweet rice k s i r chir is milk condensed milk khir 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 not khir khir so this is milk ocean is lying on so it's known as chiro daksha vishnu or that means ocean shai is who is lying down chir is milk so one vishnu who is lying on the milk ocean okay it is this vishnu that expands as parmatma and also comes as different incarnations like lord ram lord nisinga dev kurma avatar etc etc is this vishnu he is also known as simply vishnu so we don't always say chiradaksha vishnu we say vishnu we say vishnu we mean chiradaksha for these two we take the full name and that's how we distinguish Uh, Prabhu ji, Shiro Dakshayi. Yes. Per per universe. Yeah, one in each universe, inside each. Prabhu Dakshayi Vishnu, one outside each universe. Shiro okay. Dakshayi Vishnu, one inside each universe. So again, trillions and trillions of them, one per universe. Okay. Uh, so, Prabhu. Yes. So what is the like Shiro Dakshayi Vishnu takes all the avatars. So, what is the job of Karbo Dakshaya Vishnu? <laughs> First of all, he has produced the uh, lotus flower, where, and we'll talk about that also in a second, um, where he's produced Lord Lord Brahma, and this stem of the lotus flower is the uh, the constitution of the universe. We'll talk about the fourteen planetary systems and all those kind of things. That's there, okay, and then he expands into this Vishnu. those are his functions so prabhu ji garbo daksha vishnu is not in the material creation he is outside the material like in the spiritual well yeah. actually no um he he is outside each each universe so that's material world his his own <laughs> body is not material just like chhodasha vishnu he is inside the universe but is a corner inside the material universe which is spiritual world that's why he stays in the shwet dweep or shir sagar so but it's very much Vish- inside the material world vishnu tatva is 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 part of the material world where shora dakshay vishnu is no vishnu tatva is not material vishnu is vishnu tatva which is spiritual but his his made a spiritual world inside the material world I I show you slide later on that make it more clear, but this is a spiritual world in a corner of the material world. So, for example, a part of that spiritual world is also Dhruv planet. Okay. So, which is not visible to us. Sorry, bro. Uh, the milk ocean or the world, uh, which which the spiritual world within the. within this universe is not visible to anyone right correct but although you can see the uh, dhruv polar star so i guess the part of that is visible but not the rest of it okay okay so uh, uh, prabhu ji yeah. yes uh, like all these um, vishnu are are like simultaneously present in those universes right correct correct and and with one excel of uh, karunodaka karunodaka karunodakshai vishnu uh-huh. uh there were there were milli, uh, millions and trillions of universes correct. and is it like for every excel will it be like that or or is it only one excel yeah so you ask one wonderful questions so yes <laughs> every time he exhales all this come out but guess what happens when he inhales okay everything goes in okay that's the that's the apocalypse annihilation of material world no more material world and then he exhales again and they all come out we'll talk about all that okay okay, okay. but Thank great you. question yeah uh, prabhu ji shri dakshnai vishnu mm-hmm. 
uh, we uh, like you said that uh, is the Shri Dakshnai Vishnu, which is in everybody's heart. So um, this Paramatma feature. Okay. He expands his Paramatma feature mm -hmm. and pervades every atom, as well as he resides in the heart of every living entity, regardless okay. of what kind of body they have. You are okay. Thank you. Are, yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, Prabhuji, Prabhuji, yeah. I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, go ahead. Like, what about the previous, uh, I mean, uh, Lord, second, Lord Narayan and second Samkarshan and like all those um, like are also still like simultaneously present? Correct. But they are um, in the spiritual world. Okay. Um, but but their I mean their lifetime or their exhale is like same as the Karunoda Chai Vishnu's no. exhale and inhale. No, they don't okay. inhale or exhale. <laughs> okay. <laughs> they don't okay. they are there, but they don't inhale or exhale. Only Karunoda Chai Vishnu does this creation work by inhaling and exhaling. Okay. okay. Uh, one more question. Uh, of course, go ahead. Uh, why why was the second layer created? So basically, the first layer incarnates in Dwarka Leela. Second one does not incarnate the only expansion. And, and also the Sankarshan part, expansion to Kondasha Vishnu to start the creation process. So they all have their roles. Okay. okay. Okay, let's... And, and there are no uh, roles of uh, uh, like first first generation and the second generation Narayana to uh, Aniruddha in the uh, in these uh, uh, like material or spiritual world, right? Like I mean after after Garbod, uh, after Karunodakshayi Vishnu is created there is no connection between I mean like there is no involvement of their uh, hands in, in, in this process. Is so it... understand one thing, they're all non-different. So actually if you read the scriptures, you hear Narayan, Vishnu, Hari, all the same breath, meaning the same person. So they're non-different. It's not like, uh, you know, father and son in the material world with the two different people. So different, but not different. So we don't really distinguish. So a lot of times, for example, in Bhagavatam, you'll see what we know Chirudakshaya Vishnu does, but they might say Gabhutakshaya Vishnu. So that, that just become, does become confusing. But understand this way, Krishna's expansions, all of them, are non-different from Krishna. Okay. Okay, a slightly different concept than the material world. Okay. And, and that includes uh, like Lakshmi and uh, uh, Radharani as well? Uh, no, so there's only one Radharani, period. And Radharani is always with Krishna only. Okay, okay. Okay, there's a one Lakshmi. All Lakshmi, by the way, are expansions of Radharani. But there's one Lakshmi for every Narayan or Vishnu form. Okay. So are there billions and billions of those. And there's, there's a separate planet for each Narayan or Vishnu form. And in each one, you have Vishnu or Narayan and one Lakshmi. And then, uh, Prabhuji, they have like all these are separate spiritual like worlds. The correct that? that the billions of spiritual worlds, collectively known as Vaikuntha Lokas. And then above them is the Golok Vrindavan where Krishna resides. Okay, so Vaikuntha is the collection of trillions and trillions of spiritual worlds, or planets, if you want to call it. So technically, even Lakshmi Devi is uh, Vishnu Tattva, right, Prabhu? No, she's Shakti Tattva. She, she's the Shakti, the energy of Krishna. Radharani Shakti Tattva, she's the energy of Krishna. Pleasure potency. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Prabhu, you mentioned that uh, Garbhodakshaya Vishnu is outside each universe. And Shirodakshaya Vishnu is inside each universe. 
So is there a specific location where they are situated or? Yeah, I'll show you. I'll show you. So okay. bear with me. I'll show you a slide. Okay. I have one more question. Yeah, Sorry. go ahead, please. Yeah. Um, I, uh, in Bhagavad Gita classes, you were also explaining about artists in the center and Brahmaloka is in the top and then Goloka Vrindavana, right? So uh, in between Brahma, Brahmaloka and then Goloka Vrindavana, all these uh, layer, I mean, I can, if, if, okay, all these forms will be, all these expansions will be there, right? So uh, oh. basically there's a river called Causal Ocean of Vrija Nadi that's between material world and the spiritual world. So just above this ocean is the Brahman effulgence, right? This is the boundary between spiritual world and material world. But in the causal ocean, all these bubbles are there, universes. So this is where just outside of each bubble, Gavadasa Vishnu appears. And then inside the bubble, he appears as Chirudaksha Vishnu. Okay. Okay. So, if, sorry, uh, just to continue, in continuation of that, uh, oh, from uh, Karno Dakshaya, Dakshai Vishnu to Goloka Vrindavana. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, then, the other way. That's the other way. way. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right. Then Krishna also has what's known as Gunavatar or qualitative expansions. So, you have Lord Vishnu himself, which is. Um, Shurodaksha Vishnu. So remember now, whenever we say just Vishnu, we mean Shurodaksha Vishnu. So more of pure goodness, expansion is Lord Vishnu himself. So it's Krishna's expansion. More of passion for creation is Lord Brahma. And more of ignorance for annihilation is Lord Shiva. So they're known as three qualitative expansions of Krishna, or Guna Avatars. I have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Um, why, who represents or why is Lord Vishnu just mode of pure goodness, not just mode of goodness? Good question. So, Lord Vishnu is uh, Vishnu Tattva, which means it's purely spiritual and nothing material can touch him. So, mode of goodness is material. Therefore, it cannot touch him. So it's more of pure goodness. On the other hand, Brahma is like you and me. You could become Brahma in your next life. You know that. So you are a living entity and uh, therefore you're not in pure anything. You're more of passion. Similarly, Lord Shiva is another Shiva Tattva between living entity and Vishnu Tattva. Jeev Tattva and Vishnu Tattva. It's his own Tattva. Right? So that's not pure either. Only Vishnu is pure whatever. Hence the difference. Okay, Thank so these are the three qualitative expansions. They also participate in the creation process and the maintenance process and the annihilation process. And uh, now here's what everybody's looking for. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh, if you go to the last slide, uh, the Vishnu that's there, is that the, the third one in the previous slide, Shiro, Shiro Daksha? Correct, yeah. Remember I was saying, whenever you say Vishnu only, we mean Chiro Daksha Vishnu. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. Now this is what inside the universe, inside of the universe looks like. Now I'm sure it's very, very clear to you. So I'll move on to the next slide. No, that was a joke. <laughs> Thank you, Radhika. <laughs> if you have to explain it, I'm not sure it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was hilarious. That was oh, thank you. Uh, okay. So, as I was explaining, the Gavadakshay um, uh, Vishnu lies just outside of the each universe. So, here at the bottom, you see Gavadak Ocean. Can you see it? And on top of that is lying. Gar which would, would be, which would be this Vishnu lying on the Garbhadak ocean? The first one among the two Shirobis. Garbhadak Shai, yes. Shira. No, this is Lakshmi Devi. Oh, okay. Garbhadak Shai. Every Vishnu has Lakshmi within. Every Vishnu. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, okay. Every Narayan form, every Vishnu form, they all have one Lakshmi each. So this is Gabhadaksha Vishnu. Yep. Okay. From his navel okay. is coming out this famous lotus. Lotus. Form. And there's Brahma no. sitting there. So what happens is, um, I, I had made some notes. Just give me one second. I just do my notes. Otherwise, I'll forget the point. Okay. So, but Prabhuji, uh, Brahma mm -hmm. is produced only from Garbha Raksha Vishnu, right? Not the other forms of Vishnu. Correct. Correct. So, uh, again, I'll come back to that. So, here's Garbha Raksha Vishnu. Then you may remember from last class that for the process of creation, there's something called Mahat Tattva that's created. That's just outside of all the material worlds. But that's the beginning of creation process. And first, um, how should I say? It? it transforms itself into false you, false ego. And false ego is represented in three modes, which are goodness, passion, and ignorance. And false ego in a mode of passion transforms, because this whole thing happens by transformation of things. So the false ego transforms into sound. Okay. From which the sky is generated, the ether. So here is the layer of ether, the sky. So ether has the quality of sound. And then it transforms into touch. Yeah. Yeah. From which comes the air. Which transforms into form, from which comes the fire. It transforms into taste from which water comes. It transforms into a smell or fragrance from which earth comes. But each of these layers carry the qualities of the previous one also. In other words, earth will have all the five qualities, which were what? Fragrance, taste, touch, form, touch, and sound. Scent. Water has everything but fragrance. Fire has sound, shape. touch, and form. Shape. Yeah, shape, form, whatever. Right? Yeah. And these layers are consecutive layers, each one 10 times larger than the others. So that's how it goes. This whole thing has a diameter of 4 billion miles. And that's the smallest universe we're talking about. Okay? Now, I was telling you there's a corner where the spiritual world is. This is where the spiritual world is inside the universe. So this is not material world. Okay? This is spiritual world inside. This is where Chyoda Shai Vishnu is lying. Or Vishnu. So this is Garbhodak Shai Vishnu. This is Chyoda Shai Vishnu. Okay? Now, comes really interesting and uh, confusing part which is, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the Gabhansai Vishnu takes what's known as the universal form. Which Prabhuji, is, uh -huh, go ahead. Prabhuji, I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, go ahead. But after the false ego intelligence, what's the third one? Oh, sorry, it's mind. <laughs> mind. Okay. The so mind, I'm glad you asked. From the mode of goodness, mind comes. 
okay? And so the, do the 10 demigods. And from the mode of passion comes the sense organs, you know, the eyes, ears, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. And the intelligence is there. So when all this is combined, all these elements are combined, that Brahma is able to create different bodies. But he cannot create these elements. That's what he was saying before. Yeah. These come from Krishna. But he uses these to form different bodies according to the desires of the living entities. Okay. So somebody becomes a donkey, somebody becomes an elephant, somebody becomes a human being, etc., etc. 8.4 million different species. They're all created using these ingredients. Okay. Um, Prabhuji, when mm -hmm. you were explaining about these, you said uh, Earth has, you know, everything like from there till above, and no, so everything like everything like fragrance, taste, form. Yeah. yeah okay. So then, will it will it even have uh, false ego intelligence and mind? No, qualities? no. I was just talking about these five. Ether. Okay. okay. Ether, air, fire, water, and earth. Okay. There are five gross elements. These are subtle elements. Mind okay. intelligence, false ego, subtle elements. These are gross elements. Okay? Okay. So, subtle elements don't have these qualities of sound, touch, etc. Only the gross elements do. All right? Yeah. So, so, basically, again, making the point that Brahma is not the creator, but you can call him an assembler. <laughs> Sometimes you see things like manufactured in China, assembled in Canada. <laughs> it's like manufactured by Krishna, assembled by Brahma. That's why it's known as secondary creator. Right? Or take the example of the potter. Potter is secondary creator. The primary creator is the earth. Okay? Okay. So, <clears throat> now... Let's come back here, confuse you a little bit more. So what is this? The, the stem of the lotus flower is divided into three parts. The lower planets, planetary systems, the middle planetary systems, and the higher planetary systems. Okay? Everybody sees that? Yep. Okay, then these lower planets Middle planets, high planets are further divided into 14 planetary systems. The seven lower ones, you have Atal, which is closest to Earth. You have Vital, you have Sutal. Who lives in Sutal? Very famous person. Sutal Lok. Kali Maharaj. Yes, exactly. Talatal, Mahatal, Rasatal, and Patal. And below that, are the hellish planets. The 28 hellish planets are described in fifth canto. They're there. Then in the middle is the earth, earthly planets. It doesn't mean planet Earth. It's earthly planets, planetary systems. Like Mercury, Venus, stars, moons, etc. They're all here. Then above, you have the six uh, higher planets. At the top is Satyaloka, or Lord Brahma's place. Tapaloka, Janaloka, Maharloka, Swargaloka, where Indra resides, and then Bhuvaloka. These are all higher planetary systems. So I know very confusing, but that's what this, uh, 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 what do you call it? The, the material universe looks like in floating planetary systems. And each of these planetary systems represent a body, a, a part of the body of the Lord. So the feet, the shins, the thighs, the waist and etc. etc. It goes on all the way to the face of the Lord, to Lord Brahma. Can, okay. I, ask a, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Of course. Um, how is it normally we associate rakshasas and ghosts with a lower consciousness, but here they are above the earthly planetary system? Yeah, so actually it's not even earthly. Earth is here. 
They're, yes, they're I'm saying lower. they're above, but yeah, they're usually above. we associate them with a lower Yeah, level. so uh, it says that there are certain types of demons who live in the upper planets. And if you, if you know that most of the battles happen in the upper planets, between demons and the, uh, and the, uh, and the demigods. So they, they do live together, which is kind of surprising to me too, when I saw that as a word in it. But I checked two, three different places. They all said the same thing. I said, okay, I'll present it. Otherwise, I won't take it out. Because that uh, shocked me too. Okay. Then different types of people end up living there. The other thing is that when it's Brahma's night, and again, we'll talk in more detail, then there's a fire coming from the Anuttashes and everything up to Mahaloka is destroyed. Only these top three planets are left at Brahma's night time. And of course, when Brahma dies, and we'll get into detail later on, then the entire universe is finished. But that's when Lord Karnadasha Vishnu is inhaling. And then everything just merges into him. Okay? A quick question, Prabhu. Hmm? I don't mean to make this about us, but where do we live? We live on the Bhulok. Oh, got it. Okay. All right. right. Yes. Prabhuji, I have a question. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Um, how come Garbodak Ocean is uh, at the bottom, basically? It's like where well, so, Allah is. It's... So it's not the bottom. The, the universe is lying on the, it's resting on the ocean. Oh, so the by way it looks it's like below. it's slow. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's a little misleading because this ocean, etc., should be saying below this dark green. Mm -hmm. It's kind of showing under that means that it becomes confusing. Okay. But I think what they're saying is that they think this whole thing is there and this is the Lying universe. Lying on the ocean. Yeah, this is the ocean and the okay. universe and it's below the ocean. Okay, got it. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, oh, Radhika. Okay. Radhika? Oh, okay, good. Go ahead, Radhika. No, no, no. Okay, I'll go. Prabhu, it's a lower planet, it's mentioned gross, middle planet, subtle and gross, higher planet, subtle. What is, can we explain a little bit? Yeah, it basically, it means that um, they have gross, not gross in the dirty sense, but gross in the material sense, physical sense. Similarly here, but you can't really see and touch these higher planets. They're subtle for us. Okay. Just a question, because we spent, I mean, because it is explained or we spent time talking about the, the gross coverings and the subtle coverings, mm -hmm. like each being 10 times more than the one prior to it, like what is the importance of mentioning that? Like, so, Okay, by the way, there are two very different points, but I'll answer your question. All it is saying is that there are uh, eight layers. Um, in the in each universe and it's saying look at the size of it each yeah. layer subsequent layer is 10 times larger than the previous one just trying to tell you the size of the the, the universe and size of different layers that's all it means okay it's not that in like the lower planets no no so that's what i'm saying this gross not related to that gross got it okay yeah it's a little confusing so i have a question yeah go ahead so does it anywhere mention uh, about a specific reason why the Lord uh, created this whole universe and all these planetary systems? Yeah, so it does talk about different type of entities he creates. And we'll talk about that also either today or our next class. And they have the different places of residence. So for example, you know, the, the snakes, and the Nagas, they live here. Uh, all these planets are actually, there's no sun, there's no moon, but they're very bright because of the, um, the, the money, what's the jewel on the head of all the snakes. They keep it very bright looking. Um, the, like Maya lives in Vital, very powerful demon, and they have their own wives and they have a lot of funds. They are into such gratification. Like life is great here. It's not, it's not bad life here, it's a great life here. There's no suffering. And they have very long life. You know, all this going on here. Right? It's, this is known, Bhulok is known as Martalo. The maximum and the quickest death happens here. 
In all other planets, they have a very long life. Prabhuji? Yes, Aditi. So, um, if uh, after the annihilation, everything goes back into Karuna Daksha Vishnu, right? Mm -hmm. yeah? So, then what is the work of Lord Shiva for devastation? He is the one who is causing the destruction. So, after the destruction, there everything goes. So, destruction has to happen first. Right? Prabhuji, can I ask a question? Yeah, I'm sorry, Sonam, I forgot about you. Yeah, go ahead. No problem. <laughs> Can you please? Rip, uh, I mean, you just said that uh, below Mahaloka, everything else, um, when there is night in Brahma's night, everything else um, gets an annihilated. And then, what is the what is the difference between this destruction and the actual destruction which you just said that happens when uh, when Lord inhales? Yeah. So we'll talk about that. There are three types of destruction. Or annihilation, okay. if you want to call it. One is basically when we leave our body. That's the first. Second mm -hmm. is the night of Brahma. So actually, even Mahaloka is destroyed. So Mahaloka and below. Only okay. the top three are remaining during the night of Brahma. Mm -hmm. Everything is destroyed. And then when day happens, all this gets recreated. And the whole process starts again. But when Brahma has finished his lifetime, that's when um, Kaurudaksha Vishnu inhales and everything has collapsed. So earth, for example, collapses into water, water collapses into fire, into air, into ether, and so on. And then everything finally ends up in Mahatattva, which becomes Pradhan, which is unmanifested. And all the living entities enter the womb of Nar Narayan. And that's why he gets the name Narayan. Narayan means Nar Ayan. Ayan means resting place. Nar is living entity. The rest, final resting place of all living entities is Narayan. So they are all in the womb of Narayan until he exhales again. Prabhu, I had a question. So, uh, sorry, just one second. Sonam, did I answer your question or not? Um, I, I, you did, Prabhuji, but I think it will be more clear. As you said, we'll discuss this first. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of questions being asked, which we will discuss later on. But anyway, sure. go ahead, Prabhu. Go ahead, Prabhu. Uh, so I had a confusion regarding the fact that uh, uh, it is like you just uh, like when there is night of Brahma mm -hmm. uh, up until Mahar Loka, everything is destroyed, right? Correct. Like including Mahar Loka. Correct. Now the seven sages stays in Jan lives in Jana Loka according to this one. Correct. So uh, one day of Brahma is Kalpa. Correct. And but it is said, uh, I mean, uh, in one of the lecture, I just wanted to clarify that every Manvantar, there are new Saptarishi gun appointed. Yeah. So how can I link that? Because Manvantar comes, like there are, like before Kalpa. Yeah, the 14 like, Manvantars in one Kalpa. Yeah. So right. every, like, so when, uh, so 14 times already in the day of Brahma, there are uh, Saptarishis sub, are already, even though they live in Jana Loka, which is higher than Mahar Loka, they are like, unko change kiya jata hai. So let me put it this way. The population of Jana Loka is more than seven. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is that, is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Prabhuji, just one last thing. Uh -huh. When you when we read this line that each covering is ten times the diameter of the previous covering, so can so we understand it like this way. going this way? Right, okay. right, Prabhuji. So does this mean that the um, element of earth is more than the total element of water? No, and no, no, no. Other water, way. That's water. what I'm saying. Water is more than is that. the shortest. Huh. Oh, oh so I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I act, I actually meant that only. So okay. so can we say that the I mean can we compare quantitatively? We can say that one element is more than the other element. Um, just because the diameter is uh, circumference is larger, is that what you mean? Yeah, that's what I'm trying to understand. So understand that these are not. They are gross elements, but they are not like your water that you know from the ocean here. Okay. That is okay. a different concept. Like these are elements. Okay. Okay. Got okay. that. Yeah. Okay. I, I have a question too. Please go ahead. Yes. 
Yeah, where, where are Lord Krishna's heavenly planets? This is above the Vaikuntha locals. So I don't have a diagram here, but basically above the material world is the causal ocean. Above that is Brahman effulgence. Above that is Shiva Loka. Above that is what's known as Paravyam or Vaikuntha Lokas. Above that is Golokunda. So will there, will there be a diagram of that then, of the higher? I'm sorry? Will there be a diagram of that too? Or, or I don't the... have a diagram of that in my presentation. Okay. Uh, it ex does exist, but I don't have it here. Okay, thank you. Sure. Uh, question here, Prabhuji. Uh, during Brahma's night, where does everything reside? Is it in Karpodakshai Vishnu? What do you mean everything? <laughs> Meaning <laughs> this all the entities sorry all the living entities in oh, the living entities yes yeah. so they, they reside in gabhadaksha vishnu and then come yeah. out again with daytime but when brahma leaves his body then everybody yes. goes into because there's no gabhadaksha ocean doesn't exist at that time right and when brahma's uh, lifespan ends then the i i i've read somewhere that brahma and few other uh, residents of higher planetary, they cross over and they go to the Vaikuntha. Is that No, correct? that's not true. No. What you have read is the residents of Maharloka move to Janloka. Mm -hmm. and Mahaloka and Dilo is destroyed. No, no, I'm talking now about when 100 years of Brahma is done. Oh, sorry. I thought you were talking about night. So 100 years of Brahma done. So what happens to Brahma and the residents of Satya Loka? Okay, so once again, it depends upon uh, whether they're devotees or not. So they may go to Vakuntha Lokas, they may okay. go to uh, Vrindavan, you know, depends upon who they are and what they've done. Okay. And when demigods and Lord Brahma approached Vishnu, so is it Shiro Dakshai Vishnu or Garbo right. Dakshai Vishnu? No, no, here, right Shiro. here. Shiro Dakshai, okay. okay yeah. Yes. The bank of. Yeah. Okay. The beach, the milk beach. Yeah, that's just on the bank, yeah. Thank you. All right. That's it. So I can Prabhu, move on. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, where is the Pitraloka? It's right here. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, thank you. That's all right. It's okay. So is it like uh, um, every parent like, goes there? Like, how, how is it? Not like, every parent. Uh, it's okay. only the people, remember we discussed this a long time ago, only the people for whom it's not clearly decided whether they'll go to hell or heaven. It's like the, it's like the um, what do you call it? Transition point. No, what's wow. the transit point. It's the transit. Uh, transit. Okay. Yeah. So, Vajik, can you please move your cursor because I still can't see where it's. Right here. Local. Right here. No, I can't see that. Just not this one ago. Uh, <laughs> okay, okay, I got that. Ah, of course. Prabhuji. Hanji. Uh, <laughs> who, who goes to this loka? Atal, Vital, Sutal. Okay, who? so basically you want to know who resides there. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay, so let me see. Actually, um, it, is, uh, it is written in. Uh, um, with Bhagavatam, mm -hmm. that a lot of demons with some beautiful wives live in Atal. In Vital, it is said that Lord Shiva and uh, Gauri reside there. Which uh, I'll be honest with you, I didn't quite understand because I thought they live somewhere else. But Shiva Bhagavatam <laughs> says that's where they live. Okay. Maybe it's the, one of their residences, maybe. Sutal, we talked about Bali Maharaj. Bali Maharaj, yeah. Right? Yeah. Galatal, have you heard the name demon Maya? Maya demon? Maya, Maya yeah. Maya, Maya, Maya Dano. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Mahatal, a lot of snakes uh, with millions of hoods. They live there. Uh, uh, they call it a Naga, Naga Lok? Nag Lok, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you have Rasatal, mm -hmm. and then you have Patal, where Vasuki lives with his mm -hmm. associates. Okay. Because most of the time, and in, even in Bhagavad Gita, it's uh, it is uh, uh, it is said that 
uh, the people in uh, what more of uh, uh, ignorance they go. they go to the darkest region so are these the darkest but but these are not dark regions. remember i was saying that they're not dark at all they so are not dark regions they're okay. lower planetary systems they're not darkest regions ha huh, because i read that uh, sutal bali maharaj uh, uh, place is uh, uh, more beautiful and more rich than yeah. sega that's what yeah. i said that's what i'm saying too i'm saying the same thing then i have see i see here uh, 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 about the bhuvar loka demigods and demons also <laughs> yeah. so but we discussed that about half an hour ago that there are some demons who also live in the heavenly planets okay and that's why they keep fighting okay okay hare krishna prabhu ha uh, where is yamadharmara yamadharmaraj which lok is prabhu i'm sorry yamaraj yamaraj oh yamraj yamraj mm. is uh, in charge of the hellish planets mm. so he's somewhere here Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Prabhu, we did not talk anything about Durga Devi right side. Are we going yeah, to talk? Deliberately, there's nothing to talk about really. I okay. mean, she has her function as Maya. She's Maya. I expect okay. to see the Lord. Mm. Okay. All right. We are only about an hour behind, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we can stop sharing. Okay, uh, any other questions? So, Prabhu, uh, a few months ago, when my um, father uh, passed away, we had this uh, Garud Puran, um, you know that um, they do. So, in that, the the priest was reading that. Uh, uh you know there was this bahitarni bahitarni nadi some river <laughs> so so is that that that's where that's in the patal lok i think so maybe. yeah so actually the two vaitarnis even the causal ocean is known as vaitarni river and this vaitarni river which consists of pus and blood and all those kind of things that's the one you cross to go to hell so that one's at the bottom but those causal ocean is at the top mm-hmm. who so who's thoroughly confused <laughs> who's wishing i had not covered this topic or oh, venkat prabhu hari bol <laughs> yeah so i i'm sorry like i i honestly debated whether or not i should cover this because i know it's very confusing but then i thought even if you're confused at least have some general idea of What yes. Is this? So you may not be clear, but you have, you know, like Nama Bhas, you have some, some, uh, some idea. Of, yeah, some idea of uh, what this is about. You don't need to remember the names. You don't need to remember the details. Just know yes. this, this kind of com- complex structure is what we're living in. But Prabhu, the presentation was very good. It was so yeah. clear. Oh, What thank you. Idea. Thank you. yeah doesn't get better than this because this is such a big uh, you know presentation probo it is mentioned in one place all those uh, lower planets there's a fixed life and you also touched on that it's a fixed life it's like um, in a earthly planet to be uh, you know all those uh, variations are there like that they are very less in a lower planet system no lower planet is very long L- very long, very yes. long yeah but fixed it doesn't change much it's a long life yeah yeah very long life yeah but I, but basically everything in the material world is temporary you may yes. live long but you still die yeah prabhu hare krishna prabhu hare krishna venkat prabhu yeah so prabhu if someone like dies uh, is 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 uh, like we we might come back to this earth lok also like in different form or also we stay for like other lok for a long time yeah, or a different universe altogether so you don't altogether. know where you'll go it could be any of the planets or it could be another universe okay so we just don't know so and on, and that's based on the karma correct okay. karma and krishna's plan whatever he has planned 
Yes, of course. Yes, yeah. Hare yeah. Krishna. Hare Krishna. But we are trying to go to the spiritual world, right? Yes, yeah. So you want to avoid this altogether? That's correct, yeah. Yes, Sona. Prabhuji, I just got confused between the river Viraja and Vaitarani river. So. No, I was saying that Vaitarani river is the river that goes to hell. You have to cross it, it consists of pus, blood, etc. But Virja is used both for Vaitarani and the causal ocean, so people get confused. So you have to know the context in which the word Virja is being used. Uh, so Prabhuji, River Ganga or Ganges. Sorry, so River Ganga or Ganges, it flows from the milk ocean? No. But no, it's it, from the spiritual. This is causal ocean, not milk ocean, causal ocean. Because remember, his toe punctured the layer, the boundary of the material. Layer, yeah. So that's causal ocean coming. Okay. Uh, oh, it's still 9 30 already, huh? Sorry, go ahead. Prabhupada, I just want to ask one last question about uh, so, like, uh, so when we look at this whole. Uh, uh, you know the whole concepts that you explained today uh, from the from science perspective. Like science talks about the nine, you know, solar the the solar system, the the nine planets. So, uh, so do you think that philosophy fits in 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 what we discussed? Like from if we just look at the earthly planet. Uh, yeah. So the, they are all the, all the planets you are dating. They are all earthly planets. <clears throat> it's just the the same earthly planetary system has all those nine, uh, nine planets that you're talking about and more. Mm -hmm. So Earth is just one of the planets in the earthly planetary system. Yeah. Hmm. So okay. the way Earth has a Krishna, own... Sorry, let him finish. Let him finish, please. Go ahead, Vrajan Nandan. Prabhu. So the way Earth has its own sun planet, who is uh, providing light to the Earth planet? Similarly, the other planets in this um, uh, within the Garbhodakshay, uh, uh, you know, the, the planets that are coming out of the Garbhodakshay Vishnu, each of those planets have their own source of light as well. As far as I know, all the higher planetary systems they have the same and one sun. Mm. So Earth and above. As far as I know, there's only one sun. Mm -hmm. per universe okay so now now if i look at it from science perspective when we say you know how the position of earth and sun how the the, the revolution how they rotate and then how the other planets rotate around it so if i look at those concepts how would those fit in with there's no difference there's no contradiction there's no difference they all in their orbits put by lord krishna as he says in Bhagavad Gita, as if on a, um, uh, what does he say? The pulse, pulse on a string. They put them on a, uh, on a string in their planetary orbits and they stay there, they rotate and they stay and they rotate. Mm -hmm. And so there's no contradiction, the same. Mm -hmm. Oh, just because, the, because there is so much distance between the earth and the sun, in that much distance you have these other planets that we talked about? Well, not necessarily in the same line. How well, we can understand science and... Sure. They're different, different, uh, you know, different uh, angles, I guess. Yeah. I'm just getting too technical. Yeah. Somebody else was asking a question. Sorry. Uh, Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, Vankat Prabhu. Uh, uh, how can we compare black holes uh, like uh, the black holes, uh, the universe, universes are merging, uh, like destroying there, right? Is it like uh, uh, Vishnu is inhaling? Yeah, so you could you could think like that, that uh, ultimately the ultimate black hole is is uh, Pranodaksha Vishnu, with everything merges in that. But but the scientists don't really get to that point. They get to the point of what we are calling Mahatattva, which is where everything material merges into but they stop there they're not going beyond that so to them 
Mahatattva is what we call they call black hole. Okay. Prabhu just wanted to share that uh, as uh, Brajanan Prabhu was asking on the science thing related to the science. Today uh, I was uh, teach my my daughter had to learn the so solar system. So I came today. I mean, I don't know. I, I I left solar system reading and everything long back, and today I came to know Pluto is no more planet now. Yes. So now I mean, I was thinking how much science is reliable, and how much we should You're think right. about it. You're right. Uh, in everything in science, things change. Yes. Theories change. Uh, what they call the so-called facts change. Medicine changes, one, what was effective one way, one day is not effective anymore. You, somebody saying, take vitamins, they're good for you. Somebody else says, vitamins do no good. You know, all those kinds of things. So that's the thing about material things. There's a lot of cheating going on and there's a lot of uh, misinformation going on. And we are suckers just believing it. That's why just rely on the scriptures, you'll never go wrong. Okay, so uh, it's actually past our uh, allotted time. Uh, let me see. Um, I, I covered about 50% of what I had uh, wanted to cover today, but I knew yeah. probably I will not be able to do it. So we'll cover the other 50% in the next class. And, uh, but I would rather do it this way, unless somebody has serious objections in that at least whatever we cover, you're somewhat clear on the concepts as opposed to just rushing through it and nothing being clear to you. So I hope everybody agrees with that approach. Yep. And yes, uh, thank you. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. So, so we'll continue with that. And uh, <laughs> thank you, Radhika. <laughs> Two thumbs up. Uh, and uh, yeah, any other questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them before we close off. Also, if somebody needs to leave, please feel free. There's no problem with that. Can I say something? Not a question. Uh, just before I go, I wanted to say thank you so much. I know it's like a lot to explain, but one thing I was thinking as you were explaining it is just there's so, I mean, of course, there's innumerable universes and how lucky are we to be discussing Srimad Bhagavatam on this particular planet at this particular time. So thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, that's a very good point. Good observation. Probably you got us less confused now after that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's progress. I'll take that. <laughs> Honestly, Prabhu, we had heard this so many times before, but very little actually went into our mind. But today, a lot of things were so simplified and very well clarified. The other day, my son Karthik had a lot of questions and I myself was not able to answer. But today he was along with me in the class and I think he's got a lot of answers for his questions. <laughs> Thank that's you. He, Thank that's what he named as Shiksha Guru. Oh, Hari Absolutely. Well. <laughs> we are so blessed to have you, Prabhu. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shamamoyi. Anything else? Prabhuji, I wanted to give you thumbs up and claps also, but I am not getting the option here. So, no, do it, <laughs> thank do it, you so much. Do it visually. That's what Radhika was doing. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh, thank you. Oh, there you go. Vijayanandan Prabhu says he's a technologist. <laughs> Okay. All right then. Oh, wow. I see all these hands. Thank you very much. Wow. Never seen so many hands on one screen. There thank you, you Prabhuji. Thank you. Thank you so much. Prabhuji, I, I have a question actually. Very mm -hmm. nice. Yeah. Um, so, so each one in this universe, I mean, each individual in this universe are like uh, made of these eight tattvas. No. Actually, actually, there are 23 elements. So you have the five gross elements. You have five subtle elements. You have uh, five uh, sense objects. You have 10 senses. That's, and the mind, that's 21 right there. 
and then you have uh, uh, the false ego mind intelligence is 24 and i think that's 25 not 23 and then 25 is the material nature itself 25 elements that's what it takes to make a body okay and then a living entity goes in there the body becomes alive okay and and this is what is the process for all the individuals in in any loka in this universe correct in, universe. in any okay. universe in any universe it's the same the ingredients are the same oh, okay so they I may look different the size the type of the body may be different from planet to planet universe to universe but the ingredients are the same okay but 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 this is not i mean uh, uh, this is not applicable to brahma but uh, i mean except brahma in this universe right um, well brahma is swayam who before the other things were created so that is correct yeah okay 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 got it thank you brahma. but it is quite possible that the same ingredients were used by the lord to make brahma because he also does die okay okay Right, and you know that uh, uh, when he appeared first, he had only one head, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then he was so confused and couldn't see anything in the dark. So he was looking at all the four sides very quickly, trying to rotate his head. So four heads appeared. That's how he got four heads. Ooh. So he can see one in each direction. But those of you who know the Brahm Vimohan Leela, when he was trying to offer obeisances to Lord Krishna. There was a problem, but no matter how he did that, one head was always looking up. And uh, you're not supposed to be that when you're offering obeisances. So he realigned them all. So they were all facing the same direction. Then he offered his obeisances and they came back to the original form. Just a little bit of trivia for you. Okay, thank you. Okay, all right. Thank you again then. Thank you all very much. Welcome back. Really enjoyed. And I'll see you next Thursday. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. 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 Hare Krishna